we're going to look at a little experiment that's pretty popular in undergraduate physics programs or in, say, AP Physics C uh, to look at uh, motion with air resistance. And so this is an experiment where you drop coffee filters, and of course if you drop them, um, gravity will act upon them. So here's the force of gravity, mg, uh, acting downward. And one way of setting up this experiment is it can help you decide whether a linear drag model or a quadratic drag model is best for modeling air drag. Well, so here's this drag force that would be acting upon it. And in the linear drag model, the linear drag force is proportional to the velocity. So we often will write it as BV. This B is a constant called a drag constant or drag coefficient. And since the combination of BV would have units of Newtons, since it's a force, well, B by itself must have units of Newtons divided by meters per second because it would be a force divided by a velocity. Uh, quadratic drag is a model in which the drag force is proportional to velocity squared. And so in this case, the units of C would be a force divided by velocity, by velocity squared, or Newtons divided by, well, meters per second in parentheses squared, um, since the combination CV squared has units of Newtons. So if you want to find the terminal velocity, that is the velocity, the maximum velocity this thing will reach when you drop it, you can simply set mg equal to bv, and what you'd find out is the terminal velocity would be mg over b. And again, that just comes from setting the um, force of gravity, mg, equal to the linear drag force, bv. Uh, in a quadratic drag model, you could find the terminal velocity by setting mg equal to cv squared. And in that case, um, you would find out that, well, v terminal is not just mg over c, but actually root mg over c. Um, and again, that just comes from setting mg equal to cv squared. Well, so the big question is, which model is better? How do you tell which one's going to be better? Uh, well, so what's often done is you adjust the mass of the falling coffee filter well just by adding more coffee filters. So you end up uh, adjusting the mass without adjusting the shape, say by doubling the coffee filters or putting three of them in a stack. And so what you can do is drop a coffee filters of different masses by simply changing the number of coffee filters. And what you can do, let's say you start with a linear drag model. What you can do is make a graph of the terminal velocity versus the mass that you have dropped, okay? And what will happen is if the linear drag model is good, then, you, well, you can see here that the terminal velocity is supposed to be proportional to mass. Um, and so what will happen is if you start to graph your data, um, you'll find that it should be linear in this case if the linear drag model is accurate, if you plot uh, V terminal versus the mass. Now, in the case of quadratic drag, Right. Um, what you would do, oh, by the way, I should mention the slope here, if this model is good, if you plot V terminal against mass, the slope would be this coefficient on the mass, which would be G over B. Um, and in the case of quadratic drag, you also, you make a similar graph, um, but instead of plotting V terminal against mass, you actually would want to plot V terminal against square root of mass, because you can see from this relationship that the terminal velocity is proportional to the square root of mass. Um, and then, so when you go plot your data, um, it would be in, if the quadratic drag model were best, then that data would be linear, plotting V terminal against root mass. Uh, and in this case, the slope would be root G over the, um, this quadratic drag coefficient. So the way the experiment goes is you just kind of make these two plots and figure out or see which one makes a better uh, linear fit, all right? Um, so just a little bit here to kind of goof around with this. Um, so here were, uh, well, two of us that were holding a two-meter stick. So this was during COVID times. You can see we're wearing the, these masks. So we're about six feet apart, as you were supposed to be at the time. And we have a stack of two coffee filters, four, six, eight, ten. Um, so same shape, but they just have different masses because there are a different number of coffee filters. And so when we drop them, we just release the stick. And, of course, the stick falls faster than the coffee filter, so it's out of the picture. Um, 
And what you see is that the heavier stacks do indeed have, well, higher terminal velocities because why? They've fallen uh, a greater distance in the same time. So the stack of 10 filters fell farther in the same time um, than, the, than the, say, stack of 2, 4, 6, or 8. Um, and then you can actually notice here that the distance that they fall is not actually really linear in the mass. Um, it seems to um, well fall off in a different way from that. So it's a little bit of an indicator that the the uh, terminal velocity uh, may not be directly proportional to mass. But you can find out from doing that experiment um, here in which you make these two graphs and see which one is a better linear fit. So enjoy. Hope you have a good time with your class doing this experiment.